When it comes to Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving is like the setup, the setup for Christmas for a lot of people, because I saw you online. If you, if you follow me on Facebook or Instagram, I saw you in line at two o'clock in the morning, like, like eating something, doing something, waiting with a, a, another thousand people at a store trying to get something for what? For Christmas. It's, it's, you're like, I'm getting ready, I'm getting prepared. Anybody one of those people that were out like crazy? Come on, wave at me. Some people are like, nah, uh man, I'm staying home. It's Cyber Saturday, Cyber Monday, Cyber every day. You know what I'm saying? I just got to order it and they bring it to me. I don't even have to look at anybody. You know what I'm saying? I just got to look at my front door and hope it shows up. You know what I'm saying? On time. But, and that's where some of you are like, yeah, that's me. That's me. I am not fighting the crowds. But some people are like, they're giddy about it. They're like, man, I love it. It's just awesome. I like walking in there like, like on Friday. You know what I did? We went to the mall at four o'clock in the afternoon, you know what I'm saying? And it was still like bustling with people. I'm walking in here going, man, I'm out of here. I was th- at 30 minutes, I was done, hello? I got what I needed, I don't walk down, I'm a man, okay? So, so when it comes to uh, that, you know, like it's a setup. When it comes to, cri- how, let me ask you this question. How many have your tree up? You're decorated, your house is decorated? Wave at me. Okay, there you go. How many have lights on the outside of your house? Man, I'm telling you, when, when I was 24 years old, I was newly married, and I went to um, my wife's grandparents' house. And for me, Thanksgiving, I mean, this is a vacation. I'm coming down here for vacation. Thanksgiving is a time to eat, lay on the floor, and watch football. It's just a time to just zone out, and you eat in the morning, you eat at noon, you eat it. They're like, man, we're eating at 11.30 in the morning. I'm like, who does that? That's like brunch, you know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yes, I get to eat at 11.30, 2.30, 2.30, 4.30, 6.30. I'm gonna eat pumpkin pie before, during, after. I could eat pumpkin pie in the morning. I didn't have a pumpkin whoopie pie this morning. I probably should have, because I needed some sugar in my life. But, but I'm telling you, there's things that, I mean, I, but then when, once we ate lunch, they, they like broke the bad news. And I was like, they're like, hey, let's go decorate. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Did you just bait and switch this thing? Like you feed me and then you're like, get out there and get to work, boy. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what grandma's like. She's like hauling boxes and boxes and boxes. I'm like, how much do you put? She's like, I got to win the neighborhood. I got to have more than anybody else in the neighborhood. She's competing with the entire island. She lived on this place called Singer Island down in South Florida. I'm like, all right, let's do it. Up on the ladder, up on the, who's getting on the roof? I guess I will, I'm not afraid of heights. Who's hanging this, who's hanging that? After hours of doing that, the house seemed to look like this. It's really not the house, that's Christmas vacation, the movie, you know what I'm saying? But I'm telling you, that baby lit up like, like, like crazy. And we'd sit back there, it's like six o'clock, I'm like, serve me some more food, because I just ate, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready. See, that's, that's what I thought vacation was going and eating and hanging out, but now I found out it's decorating for Christmas. And then coming back for Christmas, I'm thinking, okay, second time with family. Just barely in the family, you know what I'm saying? When you go to somebody else's house and they've got a massive family and they all show up and you don't know all the rules, hello? You don't know all the expectations, you don't know anything, it's kind of a setup because you're just like like in the dark going, I wonder what I should do, what I shouldn't do, what works in my house doesn't work in your house, shake your head if you understand what I'm saying. So all these different rules are taking place and, and, and they're like, okay, it's Christmas and I'm thinking, okay, they all open gifts and everything and then someone says, there's a, there's a card on the tree for you. I'm like, when you're 24 years old and someone puts a card on the tree, there better be something in that card. You know what I'm saying? I got high expectations for what's in that card. It was the size of money. You know what I'm saying? You don't give somebody a money-sized card without being something inside. Shake your head if you know what I'm saying. So I open up that card and I'm like, whew, unexpected. 24 years old, in college, driving a Yugo, a disposable car. I mean, telling you something you, you use, throw it away. It's just, you did whatever. I, that's what got me through school, whatever. I brought it here, it died, and I got rid of it and got another car. That was 1993. But, I mean, early 90s, I'm like, okay. <sighs> and there was a $50 bill, 50 crisp dollars. When you're 24 years old, man, and you get paid $2.85 an hour to vacuum the floor in a chapel because that's what you try to do, and your wife works at a local bank, and you're just trying to make it, that's like, that's called favor. I'm like, whoo. God is good, hello? The next year I go, you know what I'm doing? I'm looking on the tree. Hello? 
The next year I see it, I'm like, yes, there is a God in heaven. The third year, yes, there is a God. Fourth year, yes. You know, when I wrote this, when I started writing down what I'm talking about today, because today we're gonna talk about favor, I realized something at the age of 24, that favor flows out of relationship. The favor isn't something that we make happen. Favor isn't something that just, that we, that we d- just dream up to happen. Favor comes out of relationship. The whole reason why Jesus came into this world. Look in John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus said this in his words. I have come that you might have life. Everyone say life. And live it to the full. In the King James Version, it says life more abundantly. The word life there is the word Zoe. And the word life there means a life active, vigorous, devoted to God, blessed life. In this world, in life, and after death. He didn't just say, I want you to live a life that's blessed. He said, I want you to have an abundant life. Look at what Jesus said. An abundant life in the the Greek is the word persistos. And and it says over and above, more than necessary, an advantage, extraordinary, beyond measure. Superfluous. That's a word you don't hear anymore. Uncommon. You know, when I I look at abundant life, when Jesus wrote that down, you know the first thought that comes into my mind? Favor. Jesus died so that we can have favor on our lives. It's not something I deserve, and it's not something I can demand, but it's something I can receive. It's something that I can accept, because when I accept Christ into my life, I am a part of the family of God. And the one thing I always pray as a pastor, I always pray, Lord, place favor on my family, place favor on my sons, place favor on this church, place favor on on my team of pastors. And the dolphins. <laughs> they need more than favor. Hello. And the jaguars. I mean, some people like playing for favor today. Hello. I mean, I pray for favor over my baseball team and they lose in the seventh game. I'm just like depressed, you know, frustrated. Like, I prayed, God. It wasn't his will. You know, it just didn't happen. Sometimes we, we, we want this favor thing to happen all the time because we pray a certain thing or do a certain thing. Let me help you out. Favor is not something you advertise. It's not something you post. Favor is something that lives in you. And his name is Jesus. He is full of favor. How many know he's full of favor? He's the author of life. So when God said that he would, he would come into this world, Luke chapter 1, we're going to read there. But we've got to realize that the Christmas story, the, the vacation that took place, or, or the story in, in, in Luke, we've got to realize that, that the whole reason why Jesus came into this world is because God wanted to repair a relationship that was broken in the garden. The thing that broke the relationship was sin. And somebody had to die in order for us to have a relationship. 2,000 years later, we're still talking about a baby. We're still talking about a man that hung on a tree. We're still talking about a man that got up out of the grave and said, I'm coming back for you. We're still talking about our Jesus. How many glad we're still talking about him? We're still talking about him. Because he's life, and he's everything. And when he's everything, we can realize that favor is what he wants to put on our lives and put in us. See, Luke chapter 1, 2,000 years ago, an angel, the Bible says the angel Gabriel, the angel of the Lord Gabriel comes and appears to Mary, and he tells her that you have favor on your life. Let's read it together. Luke chapter 1, verse 26, it says this. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to be a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28, the angel came to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. Look at this. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Verse 29, when she saw him, she was troubled by his words and considered in her mind what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not yield to your fear, Mary, for you have, been, you have found favor with God. Listen, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and he shall be called the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Verse 33, and, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, but how? How can this be? How can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel said to her, 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People are used to say that she was barren, but she has conceived and, and a son is now in her sixth month. Look at this, you ought to highlight this. Not one promise from God is empty of power for nothing. Can you say nothing? Come on, say, say nothing. You know what nothing is? Nothing. Nothing is impossible with God. When Mary, when Mary responded saying, this is amazing. I will be the mother for the Lord as his servant. I accept whatever he has for me. May everything you have told me come to pass. And the angel left her. Lord, God, I pray, Lord, that you would just speak to us through this, through these verses, God, through Mary's life, Jesus. Lord, as we, as we see the favor that was on her life, God, God, I pray, Lord, that today, Lord, we would accept your favor. Lord, we would believe that, that whatever you have for us, God, Lord, may it be so. Have your way in this moment, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for his word today. See, so if you're taking notes today, the, the favor of God um, makes impossible things possible. If you're here today and you're like, man, pastor, there's some impossibilities in my life. There's some things I'm facing that you could label impossible. There's some things I'm going through that I don't see the answer for. I would say that that's impossible. But when I realize that God is with me, when I realize that his blessing is in my life, when I realize that real life lives in me, then guess what? His favor can make anything that seems impossible to be possible. It all has to come down to the fact that we've got to realize that, that, that we're a whole lot like Mary. Because Mary's standing there, think of this. This is a young lady, and, and this angel of the Lord shows up to her. They don't describe what he looks like, but she recognizes that it's an angel of the Lord. And Luke tells us this account of, of, of this angel, angelic just appearing to Mary. And I don't know about you, but if an angel showed up in my bathroom, showed up in my living room, showed up in my garage, showed up anywhere, I would be a little concerned. Hello? I would be like, okay. Who is going to believe me? But today, hello, we have the word of God. And we know that this angelic appearance is the angel of the Lord. Whenever you see the, the word, the angel of the Lord, whenever you see that, his name is Gabriel. It is the exact represent. It's like God himself standing there and declaring to her. And the reason why I say a lot of us are like Mary, we kind of lose our mind when we can't control certain things. The one thing that comes on our hearts and comes on our lives is, is this thing called fear. How many's ever been afraid before? Let me try that again. How many's ever been afraid before? <laughs> Let's try that a third time because I don't want to make, make sure everyone's telling the truth. Okay. How many's ever been afraid before? Okay, here we go. When it comes to fear, fear is a real thing. Fear is not something that you can avoid. Fear is, fear is something that, will, that you'll face in, in a daily basis at times. Fear is something that Mary faced, and if we let our fear take over, fear will keep you from the favor of God. Because fear is the thing that, that keeps you where you are. It doesn't get you to step out and respond. See, when it comes to faith, faith is the thing you step up and you step into. Let's make it simple. When it comes to giving, comes to tithing, comes to serving, comes to this room, being in this room, there's a point where, where you could be afraid, if I do this, then how is this going to happen? This is not possible because I know the situation. That's fear talking. But when we take the step of faith, we're saying, God, faith is what, what favor flows out of. So if I have faith, listen, it's not faith and faith. It's not like, okay, if I do this, do this, do this, do this, then God's going to do this, this, and this. No, my faith is not in the provision. My faith is in my God. So when my faith is in my God, I'm saying, God, regardless of what I feel, Regardless of what I see, regardless of what I hear, I can still have faith. Why? Because God's greater than anything I'm walking through. See, the enemy would want you to, want you to just, you know, just, just be motivated and respond to fear. Remember when you were a kid? What were you afraid of when you were a kid? When you were small, you were afraid of certain things. There were certain things you're afraid of. You're only born with one fear. Everything else is learned. That's what, that's what psychologists tell us. Everything else is learned. The only fear that you're, that you're um, well, there's two fears that you're, you're afraid of that you're born. The fear of falling. So if you take a baby and you do this, don't do it, okay? <laughs> if you do this, don't go, <laughs> you know? 
I did that before <laughs> to my sons. I'm like, does it work? Yeah, it does. Wow. No, don't do that. But then, then the other thing they're afraid of is loud noises. You know what I'm saying? How many afraid of loud noises? Come on, let me you jump. You know what I'm saying? If a loud noise goes off, you're just like, whoo. Why? Because you weren't expecting it. It's a natural response to it. Everything else is, is learned behavior. So when you're a kid, you're, you're afraid of the dark. Was anybody afraid of the dark when you were a kid? Some of us still have a TV on. We still have the nightlight on. We still have something because we want to make sure. And I, do, I don't know about you, but when I wake up in the middle of the night and uh, I walk through my house and it's dark, stepping on dog bones is not pleasant. Hello? I would love to see where I'm going, but at this age, I know I'm going in one direction. It's towards the restroom, okay? It's just one of those, anybody? Let's not go there. But when it comes to life, life has situations where we can be afraid and say, I'm just going to stay where I am because I'm comfortable, because, because this is what I can control. This is the experience. This is my situation. Or you can step out in faith. Some of us are afraid of the dark. Some of us are afraid of loud noises. Some of us are afraid of storms. Anybody afraid of storms? Somebody, some of us are afraid of bugs. Anybody afraid of bugs? Who's still afraid of bugs? Roaches, spiders, bees, all those critters in the world that were named. Come on now. Some people are stuck. Ah, you freak. When you see them, like, they're going to bite me. No, they're not, okay? If you put, okay, let's go on. I'm just not trying to counsel today. But, but when it comes to those things, when we were a kid, we were afraid of those things. Now when we're adult, we're like, it doesn't seem so big. Why? Because we've overcome those things, many of those things. But as adult, your fears shift. Your fears shift not from the dark, but will I succeed at life? Your fear shifts in, will, will, will my marriage make it? Will my kids make it? Will I be a success? Will I have enough when I retire? Will I live the rest of my life alone? People have all these different fears in their lives, and the thing we've got to realize, we've got to attach ourselves to is, is those fears are not of God. And the reason why they're not of God is because when you read the scripture, fear is not something that God does. Fear is not something that God places on you. If you look in, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter, I'm jumping down, 2 Timothy chapter 1, the Bible says this, it is, for, it is, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. If you look at that word in the Greek, it means to put to flight by terrifying and to scare away. Does that sound like God? Is God the one that wants to scare you away? Is God the one that wants to terrify you? Now, God's not the one that wants to scare you away and terrify you. God's the one that wants to live inside of you. So if fear is not of God, then I've got to realize sometimes I've got to tell, wait a minute, not today, Satan. I'm not listening to the voice of fear. I'm not listening to the voice of I'm not going to succeed. Why? Because life lives in me. He's got a plan for me. Whatever he wants, giddy up. I accept it. Let's go. God's got a plan. How many want God's favor on your life? When it comes to God's favor, you've got to, you've got to dispel these, these ideas of fear, these things of fear. See, the Bible talks about faith, and it says, now faith is, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Now, when you look at what the Greek, what he's truly trying to communicate is a firm persuasion, a conviction based on hearing. Everyone say hearing. Now, when it comes to fear, fear is motivated by an emotion, Fear is motivated by, by something that we hear and we think and something that we see and we, we have an idea of. So when he talks about faith, faith is a persuasion or a conviction upon a hearing. Hearing what? Hearing God's word. Let's go back to Mary. Mary's standing there and the angel of the Lord shows up. And when the angel of the Lord shows up, the angel of the Lord gives her a word. And this is the word we have to realize that, that wait a minute, I can attach that word to my life. Why? Because the Lord is with me. What does he say to her? He says, blessed are you, Mary. Guess what? The Lord is with you. See, if God is with me, how many love Jesus? Is he living in your life? Come on, celebrate he's living in your life. You got to realize that the creator of the universe chose to live in me. And if he chose to live in me, that means he has a plan for me. So if he has a plan for me, then favor lives in my life. Favor is what surrounds my life. I have to surround my life. Sometimes you just got to silence the voice inside of you. If that voice is fear, if that voice is, oh, don't go there. That voice is, I'm, we get this fearful voice when we're like, should I invite my neighbors to church? What's the worst thing they can do? You know, dump their garbage in your yard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let their dog poop in your yard. I mean, what's the worst thing they can do? Hello? Come on, I'm trying to make it fun. What's the worst thing you can do? 
I'm too busy. You know? or, or sure, or, or I just may, whatever, whatever Pastor Lewis said. But I'm just telling you, that's, if that's the worst thing, then guess what? Giddy up. I'm going to invite you, invite you, and invite you. Why? Because I'm not listening to the voice of fear. I just believe God's got a plan, and his plan is faith. So I've got to listen to what he's saying. Look with me in Romans chapter 10. It says, so then faith comes by hearing. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. What he was trying to say to us is faith is found in what we hear. It's the, it's the conviction of something we hear. When we start speaking the word over our lives, some of you are fearful about situations. You gotta say, wait a minute. The Lord my God is my healer. I've gotta proclaim he is my peace. He is my, my salvation. He's my Lord. He's my redemption. He's my everything. And I've gotta realize that that the word is powerful. When, what, when I start reading it, what it does is it builds my faith. So faith comes by hearing, hearing by what? The word of the Lord. Angel shows up and says to Mary, greetings, you who are highly favored. The same favor that lived on Mary's life, get this, lives in your life. Why? Because Jesus died and he chose to live in you. His presence, you can stand in the presence of a holy God and say, God, this is what my need is. The Bible says in Hebrews, bring, you know, come to the Lord with boldness and, and the confidence and the assurance that he is the source. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but guess what? I'm going to go to the source. Why? Because that's faith. That's, that's the favor that God wants to put on my life. It's greetings, you who are highly favored. If you catch anything today. Get this. This is the word you have to, sometimes you might need to write this down. And tomorrow morning when you wake up, say this to yourself. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. The angel didn't show up and say, hey, Mary, guess what? You're full of favor. You're going to get pregnant. It's going to be amazing. No, he said, you are favored. And the one thing you need to realize, the Lord is with you. And you are blessed. God's got a plan for you. If, if God is with me, if I can just understand and grasp the fact, wait a minute, my God is with me. Guess what? I have enough. The one thing that the enemy wants to do is alienate you and separate you from God's presence. And the one thing that separates you from God's presence is fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of what I can't do. Fear of my, my limitations. Fear of not making it. Fear of not, we, 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 we struggle so hard. I said this in the first service. Sometimes we struggle so hard with this idea of success because success is framed in our own culture. We work hard. We work night. We work day. We work every hour we possibly can to chase after whatever we call success. We want to climb the ladder and everything. When we, real, we had to realize the bottom line is success, life, abundant life lives in me. Maybe you just stop in the midst of the hustle and bustle and say, God, you're with me. God, you're with me. Maybe you just need to remind yourself that God is with me. Because when you start reminding yourself that God is with me, that's when you're not afraid anymore. That's when you don't have to, you don't have to worry anymore. That's when anxiety can leave. Why? Because the creator of the universe is with you. How many know God's with you? So what did the angel say? He's like, greetings, the Lord is with you. And Mary's disturbed. The Bible says she's disturbed at what he said and disturbed at the fact that he showed up. She's like, oh my goodness. But the angel doesn't look at her and say, why are you disturbed, oh Mary? No, the angel looks at her and says, do not yield to your fear. You know what he said? He didn't say, you won't be afraid. He didn't say, you won't, play, you won't face fearful situations. He said, don't yield to it. And the reason why he said don't yield to it, because you have found favor in God. If Jesus lives in me, guess what? I don't have to yield to my fear. If Jesus lives in me, I don't have to listen to that voice. I need to say, not today, Satan. I'm not listening to you. I'm listening to God. How many of you going to listen to God? You just got to change our posture a little bit when it comes to to fear. See, the facts are simple. Here's, here's the obvious. The obvious is that Mary is still a virgin. The obvious is that her situation was, was okay, the angel showed up. The obvious is the fact that, that she is just stating the facts and saying, these are the facts. The facts of life can bring lots of fear. Loss of a job, 
loss of family members, loss of a vehicle. We focus so much sometimes on what we could lose rather than focusing on who has us. Maybe we have to change our posture during the season. Say, okay, God, one, you're with me. You've got me. I'm in the palm of your hand. I'm not going to escape it. I'm going to every day wake up and say, God, thank you that you're with me. Thank you that you're with me. Thank you, you've got a plan for me. God, it's your favor. You can put favor on my classroom. You can put favor on my work. You can put favor on my kids. You can put favor on the people around me. Why? Because if you're living me, then you are enough. You believe he's enough? Come on, celebrate if you believe he's enough. So you look at this and you're like, okay, fear. Oh, I get it, pastor. I get it. Uh, fear is is thing. Fear is, is, is a psychological and an emotional response. But let me help you out. Fear is not a spiritual response. You are a spiritual person. We don't respond according to the enemy. We respond according to our Lord. Our Lord is a, a God of faith. So when I step out in faith, I'm saying, God, I trust you. I believe in you. See, when we fear, what we're saying is, I don't trust. When we fear, we're saying is, I can't, I gotta control this thing. When we fear, what we're saying is, God, are you really gonna show up? And, and the angel says, Mary, don't yield to your fear. And then Mary does what we do sometimes. And we ask questions. Because when we're afraid, we ask questions and what happens is our feelings get out there. We start being led by our feelings rather than our faith. The one thing that'll cause you to question the favor of God is your feelings. How many know your feelings are not a good, accurate representation of who your God is? Hello? What do you mean, Pastor? Well, this morning, someone, someone decided, well, I just don't feel like it. I ate too much turkey, you know what I'm saying? Too much pumpkin. I'm just going to stay home. And for all the people that are online traveling back to Jacksonville, God bless you. Have a safe travel. We're not talking about you. I'm just saying that there's people in this room that you didn't feel like coming today, but guess what? You are in the right place. Come on, celebrate you know you're in the right place. Come on, there'll be somebody like, I just don't feel like talking to my neighbor. I don't really like my neighbor. I don't even think they like me. Why would I want to invite them? Why would Jesus hang on the cross? Ask yourself even a bigger question. Did Jesus feel like carrying the cross down the road? Did Jesus feel like being nailed to the cross? Did Jesus feel like being mocked by everybody around him? Did Jesus feel like standing there saying, God, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. But God, forgive them. God, what? Forgive them. Oh, we're supposed to model Jesus when people mock us and hate on us and, and, and poke fun at us and, and they call themselves family members. You know what I'm saying? Hello? <laughs> Might have been your Thanksgiving. I don't know. But I'm telling you, sometimes people are like, I wonder why you go to church all the time that you do. I mean, I mean, growing up, I was like, there's no better place to be than the house of God. Did you grow up like that? How many grew up like that? Let me help you out. Not everyone grows up like that. And some of the most unchurched people on the planet don't live in Africa. They live in Jacksonville. They're raised by parents that didn't take them to church. They're raised by people that, that didn't bring a relationship in and say, this is what's important, this is what's valuable. How do we as a church change that kind of mentality? We change it by saying church is real. It's real because it's for messy people. How many were messy before you gave your life to Christ? Wave at me, come on now. How many are still messy? You're still working through the mess, you know what I'm saying? That's why we need grace. That's why Jesus lives in us. He's still working on me. If he's still working on you, come on, clap. He's still working on you. So Mary asks this amazing question. She says this. I got to get going. She says this. She says, how? Everyone say, how? How can this be? How in the world can this happen? I am a virgin. And we all know, I mean, it's obvious. You cannot have a baby unless you have conception. See, Mary was like, how can this be? Sometimes we're like, we look at our situation, we understand our situation, we understand where we are, we understand where we're walking through, and our greatest question sometimes that keeps the favor of God off our lives is, God, how can this happen? The angel's answer is interesting. He says, the Holy Spirit will. God will. It's not you, it's him. If we honestly realize that favor is not what I do, favor is not what I have done, favor is who he is living in me. My feelings don't change my faith. My feelings, oh, they can lead me astray every single day. 
they, they can, I can, you know, some of us, we, we woke up and we were kind of, you ever been agitated? You wake up in the morning, it's because you haven't had caffeine. You haven't had something sweet because you've ate pumpkin pie all weekend long, you know what I'm saying? Like since Thursday, you've been eating sweets like crazy, and you woke up this morning like, rrr, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's because you like filled your body with all this sugar, you know what I'm saying? And your feelings respond to your atmosphere. Guess what? You've got to tell your feelings, regardless of what I feel, that doesn't change who my God is. Regardless of what I'm going through, that doesn't change who my God is. God's still God. He's still got a plan. God, whatever. Everyone say Whatever. Come on, say it out loud. Say whatever. Whatever you have, do it in me. This is what Mary says. Her response is whatever. Her response is in how. Sometimes we, we ask how when we, when we don't know what the answer is. We ask how because we don't know what. We ask how because we don't know where. We ask how because all we see is the facts. Maybe you need to stop asking how and start looking for God. Maybe just stop asking how and saying, okay, God, your word says that I am the head and not the tail. I'm going to believe that you've got a plan for me. I'm going to start quoting the word, listening to the word, and, and just getting the word inside of me. Because when the word's inside of me, that's when my faith is going to rise. That's when I'm going to start responding, not according to what I feel, but according to who my God is. Have you ever asked how? God, how? God, what does that look like? And then God shows up. And then God shows up and he blows your mind beyond belief. I can remember, and Pastor Steve, you guys can come. Um, before I came to the church, I've never shared this story publicly before. Before I came to, church, to this church to be your pastor, I remember Pastor Ken who sits on the, on the front row and him calling me like 40 times. <laughs> Like, would you please listen to the voice of the Lord? And I'm like, I'm like, I'm still listening to God. And I remember being in Australia and going to Australia for a conference with, with friends and stuff. And my wife was with me. And, and, and here's what my question was. God, if you really want me to do this, I was like, will you take care of my family? That's all I want to know. Will you take care of my family? I asked a simple question. I was like, just an obvious question because it was a big life change for us. I said, God, I just want my family to be taken care of. And that wasn't just my wife, my kids. That was my, my mother-in-law because she was in an assisted living facility. And we just put her in. And it was just a, it was an interesting season for us. But, but I was like, how, can you really do, will, will you be able to do this? And some of you ask simple questions. God, how will you do this? And I remember meeting a gentleman one time. I missed a flight from L.A. to, to Australia. And I was like, man, I missed my entire 49th birthday. Because when you jump from, from L.A. to Los Angeles, you jump a whole day. So somewhere over the Pacific Ocean, I, 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 I jumped two days. I was like, Psh, I didn't get, I didn't, I, man, can't get that birthday back. You know what I'm saying? I had planned to go and be, you know, just, just hang out in, in the land of Oz. You know what I'm saying? And hang out in Australia and see some kangaroos or something. I don't know. I had planned to do that, but I get there and get on this van. And, and when I get on this van... Um, there's a gentleman there, and there's several people in the church would bring us in. And, and I met a gentleman for the first time. He was a pastor in Los Angeles. And, and we talked, and he asked me what I did. And I was telling him what I did. And tell him a whole lot about what we did. And told him what was going on. And the next day, we, we stayed in the same hotel. Next day, we came down, and there was a shuttle that drove us to this conference. And, and, and he walks down, and we're sitting there. We're waiting on the shuttle. He walks down, and he walks up to me and hands me $200. And I was like, whoo, <laughs> Praise the Lord, hello? <laughs> no, I just looked at him and I said, uh-uh, no. But I'm like, what? Well, you're going to, he said, just take it. I said, okay, I'll take it. So I took it and we went to the first session. And in the first session was over, there was this room where, where pastors hung out in. And, and this guy was there. And I sat down next to him. I said, so I got to know, why did you hand me $200? And he said, the Lord wanted me to tell you that he can take care of you. He wanted me to tell you that whatever you're, you know, going through, that he's still God and he can take care of you. And I remember weeping because I asked a simple question. And somebody in this room, you're asking simple questions, and, and God shows up in unique ways. God shows up because he doesn't say, what do you, what do you, you're asking the wrong question. Mary says, how can this be? And the angel's answer is great. The Holy Spirit will. God will overshadow you, and when he overshadows you, the impossible becomes possible. And when she realized that that was the word from God, when she realized that that was the moment that everything shifted, 
Her response didn't went from how to this. I accept. I accept. I accept whatever you have for me. Some of us have been holding back because we're afraid. Some of us have been holding back on God because we've we're got these feelings of, is he really going to be able to do this? Is it really going to be worth it? Is it, is it really going to work out in me? And here today, I'm here to tell you that God gave me this word for you to realize that the Lord is with you and that when he moves, he will take care of you. When he moves, he will do things that nobody else can. That the impossible, hello? Mary is a virgin and she gives birth to the Savior of the world. Now that's impossible. That's what we say. But this man lived for 33 years and scientists and historians and everybody that's wrote everything about this man knows that he was, he was crucified on a cross. Oh, in Jerusalem today they'll tell you that he stole it, that the disciples came in the middle of the night and stole his body away. But why do we gather today on a Sunday and worship a God that says, hey, I'm here, I'm alive, because we believe. That, that's what, that's, that's impossible for the world. And then, then we, we gather, and we're Pentecostals. If you haven't figured that out, we are Pentecostals. We believe in Acts chapter 2, where, where the endowment with power comes. And when the endowment comes, he puts his power inside of you. And you can't, you, you just can't keep him to yourself. It's to change the world around you. It's to give you a life that says, I truly want to be holy. It's him working in you. We believe that moment the entire church changed, that the most powerful thing happened is when God showed up in this world. The world would say, possible. We stand and there are moments in life and we had one yesterday in our gymnasium where I have a friend who's a pastor and his niece passed away. She was 31 years old. Completely addicted to drugs. Her sister was in the youth ministry in the gym in the early 90s. She sat, I mean, I'm sitting there going, man, we believe one day we will go to heaven. We believe that there is life after death. We believe in heaven. We also believe in hell. The world would say impossible. But as a church, our response to all those things is this. If I'm going to respond to a God who's the God of the impossible, then my faith is going to be moved. Then I'm going to step out. I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to step out. Why? Because I'm going to say, I accept, Lord. I accept everything and whatever you have for me. We're like, man, I've got faith. I don't want to walk through this. All we got to realize is sometimes we walk through things and we peruse the situation and we understand the situation. And Mary said, I'm a virgin. This is who I am. This is what I am. And the angel said, but God, the Holy Spirit will trying to figure out how God lives in us and it's his favor that makes the impossible possible every single day the only thing you got to say is okay God whatever 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 if I feel good if I feel bad if I'm doing great if I'm not doing great guess what God Whatever you have for me, may everything you have said, may everything that you have said, what, what may it come to pass in me. You know what that is? Posture of faith. So how many believe that the possible is possible even when the world says it's impossible? Do you believe that today? Come on now. I think the greatest thing we can celebrate is what's possible. I think the greatest thing we can celebrate is that salvation is possible. Redemption is possible. Healing is possible. Forgiveness is possible. I think that we, when we start celebrating, wait a minute, that's possible. We push aside the impossibility. We push aside fear and feelings and choose to say what's possible is possible. Why? Because if God said it, that settles it. If God said it, then I'm going to believe it. If the word says that the Lord is with me, then guess what? All that he is and all that he has lives inside of me. The very same power that raised Christ from the dead that the world says impossible. Guess what? My God's possible. I can celebrate that. 
I can celebrate the fact that, that, you know something, I don't have to have anxiety, I don't have to have fear, I don't have to have frustration, I don't have to have these things. Why? Because I can have a great night's sleep. I can go to bed at 10 o'clock at night and wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning, if whatever hour yours are, but I can have the best rest ever. Why? He's with me. It's possible. Some people say, man, I, I just can't sleep. I can't get rest. I can't get this. I can't get this. Stop saying I can't and start saying I can. Why? Because everything you can do is in this word. Everything you can do becomes possible when he's possible. How many know he's possible? Come on now. Come on, Ocean Way. Can you stand? Can we just... Can we just celebrate him today? Can we just celebrate what's possible? Come on, if you're forgiven, come on, celebrate what's for, what, what he's done. Celebrate what he can do in the person around you. Come on, slip up your hands. Father, we love you. We bless you. We celebrate you. Jesus, there's nobody like you. God, you're holy. God, you're worthy. God, there's nobody, Jesus. Come on, put your hands together and thank him for what he's going to do. Come on, you can do better than that. Come on, thank him for what he has done. So, now that we understand that God's the God that takes the impossible, makes it possible, you gotta realize Mary's response was simple, I accept. The moment you accept Christ in your life is the moment that you become a part of the family of God. Would you close your eyes with me? I just wanna pray with you. Maybe you're here today, maybe you're online watching, you're like, Pastor, pray for me. I need to accept Jesus. I want the favor of God on my life. I want the favor to live in me. I want Jesus in me. Maybe I've walked away from him, but in this moment, I realize that I need Jesus. When I say three, slip your hand up as high as you can. Wave at me so I can pray with you because I believe that this is a moment that favor starts to live in you. This is the moment that everything shifts and everything changes simply because you believe. So that's you when I say three. Wave at me. Ready? One, two, three. Wave. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like, yes, 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 yes. Oh, yes. Come on now. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. God's good. Come on, if you lifted your hand, would you pray this prayer in your heart? It sounds like this. Jesus, today, I choose to believe. I believe you died for me. I believe you have a plan for me. So today, I believe that you can forgive me. Forgive me of all my sins. Today, I accept whatever you have for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can check us out at OceanwayAG.com and click the gift tab.